Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. My 2007 Mini Cooper that I recently got, uh, when I bought it, the window was down about this much and it had been raining for a while. I have no idea how long that window was down, but I'm a little concerned about the carpet. So what I thought I would do is I would uh, remove the carpet and let it dry out, let the interior of the car dry out, um, and hopefully things would get better from there. Uh, this information will include the removal of the front seats and also the center console. So there, there'll be quite a bit of information in this video that I hope will be helpful to you. But let's get started now by removing the front seats from the 2007 Mini Cooper. Before I get to removing the front seats, I thought what I would do is start by removing the negative battery cable, which is this one over here, uh, from the battery. Uh, with the doors going to be opening for a long time, I thought it would be best to do this. Uh, that way I don't drain the battery. So just disconnecting the negative battery cable is a first step. To make it easier to see inside this black interior, I've installed my Milwaukee light. It helps a lot. So if you can find some kind of illumination that you can put inside the vehicle, it will help you find things, especially on a dark interior like this. The front seat is held in by four T40 fasteners. There's one here in this rail. There's another one over here in this rail. And then if you move the seat forward, you'll see the remaining fasteners right there and right there. So remove those four fasteners, but don't jerk the seat out right away. Check for electrical connections first. Now I'm going to tip the seat back so I can disconnect any electrical connections. As you can see, we got a big one here. There we go. Pull this black piece out this way. And you'll be able to disconnect the electrical connection. Once again, just take one last check, make sure nothing's connected. I'm just gonna fold it forward. It's got a lower profile. And then be very careful of the sill. In fact, you might even want to put something on here to prevent damage. But make sure you lift it up and clear of that so that you don't damage it. Going to repeat the process on the passenger side, keeping all my fasteners on the seat. That way they're easy to find. Disconnect the electrical connection and you can remove the seat. Much more room to work with now. Remove the floor mats. There's like tons of room in here now. Uh, and that will allow us easier access to the center console. Yeah, there are two T25s. There's one on this side and one on the other side which it looks like somebody's already moved the cover over here that need to be removed. That will allow you to take this cover off. As you saw, the other side is missing, but uh, you'll likely have one on the other side that's going to need this treatment also. After that, take the armrest, flip it up. This one's experiencing some issues. Let's see if I can address those, but you'll note so this is a T20 in here. With that screw removed, pull straight up on the cup holder. I need to reach around the back here, pick up on it a little bit. Sort of hooked in, but you'll have this when you're done. You'll now have access to these three T30s to get the uh, armrest assembly out. Now let's remove the armrest assembly. Just pull straight up. Now I'm going to continue forward. I'm going to get the uh, parking brake boot up and off of here. Plastic trim tool. Yeah, that worked a little better. I'm just going to pull that up and out of the way so that when we lift this part up, we can get it past this. For the shifter, 
I'm just gonna pull straight up. Uh, and that comes off that way. And once again, I just need to get up past this. You can pull this out just by going in here with a trim tool if you need to replace a shifter boot. Uh, but for now, that'll do. There are two more T30s down in the cup holders. Remove those now. With the armrest removed, you can see those two tens down in there. Those now need to be removed. With those front screws removed, you can pull up on the front of the console like that. So we're gonna away from me a little bit. These plastic clips go into here. So slide it back is how you want to do it. So this has like these four on the other side too. So take the whole thing once you've got it popped up and slide it back. You're gonna have some electrical connections. You should be able to access over here. I'll give you a look. Here are those electrical connections up front here that need to be disconnected. Be careful. That one was easy enough. This is very hard to do one-handed. There we go. All right, what I was doing was pushing in on these sides and this side broke. I mean, it'll still latch and hold together, but that's where it was. Looks like there's another electrical connection here that wasn't hooked up for some reason. But now, with all that stuff removed, I can get the uh, cover, center console cover out. Since I'm removing the carpet, I also want to get this piece out. In addition to the two 10 millimeter fasteners we removed back here once we remove the armrest, there are two more. There's one here and there's one here. With that removed, let me just pull this piece. I should be able to pull this piece out of here and hopefully sneak it past all of this. There we are. I'm now going to remove this plastic piece here so that I can get this plastic out. Plastic trim tool and try to pull it towards me. You can see the clips. Clips go in here and then there's another little piece here that hooks in down here. Well, with that out of the way, you have access to, let's see if I can guess right, T30. Yay. Since I'm attempting to remove the carpet out through the front here, you can see the carpet goes underneath those pieces, but these, are dash supports. These are, two th are T30s, and then these fasteners here are 10 millimeter. I wanna remove these two brackets and then try to pull the carpet out this way from the front, starting with those T30s. I'm going to remove these trim pieces here uh, that's going to involve T20s, both here and here, and I'm hoping that makes for easier removal. I'm also going to remove the accelerator pedal assembly uh, to get that off of there. That's not part of all this. Uh, then you may also note up here, in fact, I'll just take this out now because you can just unscrew these. These just help hold the carpet in place. So that's loose now. The dead pedal assembly. I don't think it's a part of anything. And then we gotta remove these trim pieces here along the sills. But for starters, I'm gonna remove this trim piece to make things easier. Once again, that's the T20. And should be able to just harvest it at this point. Now I'll start by removing this little cover here. And this guy is a number five. Okay, I just loosened it up off camera, but you want to pick it up. Slide it up and off. So slide it upward. And you 
see underneath there? That's the piece that it's hooked onto, and that's where it hooks in. Now we undo its electrical connection very carefully, uh, pushing in the sides again, right here. Once again, there are just little pieces you push in on the side of this connector in order for it to work. And take my fasteners and keep them with all my parts. Whenever doing a big job like this, that's what I do. I just lay all the parts, all the fasteners with the parts removed. As long as I'm over here, I'd like to remove this trim piece. But you can see back here, the seat belt is attached through it. This is a T50 I'm gonna remove. There's the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna remove both of those fasteners now. don't want to lose this part so I'm just going to take the whole seat belt and just stick it up here on the back seat as long as the tool is out I'm doing this side too I'm going to start by pulling up this rubber seal and I'm not going to take it all the way off I'm just going to take it that far. I believe this is just gonna clip into place. I'm gonna be careful of this hood latch because I don't wanna damage it. You could slide it back off the clips, but it's backing up against the thing back there. So I'm just gonna unclip it this way. There we are. And you see these white clips that are left? I'm gonna pull these out of here and put them back in the trim piece. I think the carpet on this side is pretty much ready to go, aside from the back seat, which somebody has already unhooked. So I'll show you that in a moment, but that'll be really easy to move out of the way. Just gotta disconnect some stuff on this passenger side and we should be pretty much home free. Just gonna take these clips, the top portion there, and slide it in like that. It's a better view for you. So the top portion slides in like that. But you get the idea. So over here on the passenger side, I wanna remove this piece. These are also T20. Uh, once again, this is just an effort to get as much stuff out of the way as I can Gonna wonder if it's really necessary to remove this. All right, well, I made an interesting discovery. <laughs> Open the glove box, and you can get this upper trim piece off. It's clipped in. You can see those clips. So these clips go in here, and it pulls off this way. That will reveal the one fastener that I missed, which is right here. I can't say this is gonna help with the carpet removal, but it just gives you more visibility and gives you more insight in how this comes apart. But this guy was just clipped in. I just reached in there and pulled it off. As you can see, it's got these three clips there, there, and there, and I just pulled back on it. I could get to the top one by opening the glove box. But now I'm gonna go in and do this trim on this side, same as I did the other. First, I'll remove the fuse box cover. Now I'll be able to get better access in here, but first I need to get the seal off. Same as I did on the other side. Starting with the rubber seal, and then just pulling straight out. As stated, it seems that someone has already unhooked the back seat, which you just pull up on. It's hooked onto here. So if you just pull up on it, it'll pop loose. But you can see that's where the carpet terminates in the back here. In fact, I'm just gonna start pulling it free. It 
some of these connections that bridge across, I'm probably going to trim those and open them up to make it easier to remove. These are under the console. They're already molded in place. I'm not concerned about them pulling out, but there are some areas where I think that that would be applicable. Things like this, where it passes underneath here, the carpet, it just makes sense to cut it here. My only concern being this wiring harness, which I'm just going to pry it off of its mounts so that it's up and out of the way of the carpet so that I don't damage it before I start pulling on it. This is just a foam cover I'm going to remove for now. But yeah, I don't want to damage the wiring, so I'm just going to come in here with a tool and just pry these parts of the harness off of here. Pry the plastic part, not the wiring. There's like a little plastic sleeve. I don't like that at all. This was pinched up under here, and it's one of the connectors that goes to the console. So this goes up into the console, it slips up under here and, and goes up to this area. But because the carpet is in here, I didn't want to damage it. So I'm very mindful of that. It's up, it's out of the way. In fact, I could probably go one step further. No connector, no nothing. This is a bare wire. This copper piece here, if you just push it down. Uh, it's so hard to show you push it down you can pull the wire right out but that wire just slips down inside there and it's held in place by that spring that's it now granted it's just the parking light or the light for the parking brake but still I've never seen something without a connector and just a bare wire like that that is like how can we spend the least amount of money possible on this and the reason I went there is because it's part of this harness you push this down and then you can slide this back should release it which it does so electrical connector cool but this one here cheesy as heck you know what I'm gonna do this one too looks like a little 10 millimeter we'll uh, take care of that ground yeah this is that was in the way of the carpet so you would be wise to disconnect this stuff and this will help pull through uh, those areas of the carpet so i'm gonna get a 10 millimeter get rid of this ground this is another good reason to disconnect the battery this is the airbag module and even after disconnecting the battery this can be hot for a time so be aware of that to me at least this is an easy choice there's a bridge of carpet that goes underneath this parking brake if I remove this, I would still have to disconnect the parking brake cable. So I'm just gonna take my knife or a pair of scissors or something and I'm just gonna cut right in here, just like that. And that opens it up and allows it to pass over that section. That just saved me a bunch of time making this one cut that's not really gonna matter. You know what, I'm just gonna pull this it out because the carpet goes right underneath it it's just two more 10 millimeters oh. I have to change the battery in my light soon yeah, see that big area there I just saved myself a lot of headache by doing that also be careful pulling these down through the carpet you don't want to damage them see any similar fasteners up on the passenger side like that nut that we saw there this feels like an area I may need to cut darn it there's an area up underneath here right about here where something from the HVAC dash extends down it feels like the carpet splits around it if it doesn't I'm gonna make an incision here to separate it it was as difficult as this is to get out I, I don't think it's gonna cause any issues if you're wondering why I'm pulling and yanking, that would be why. 
But once that's done, the intention is to pull this back out in this direction on both sides so I can get the carpet out. That was right, it does split up there. Get the uh, electrical connections pushed through. You don't damage any of that. did it this is what a mini looks like without carpet in it cool right i will go ahead and hit this with a vacuum but mostly you can already see some of the water that's over there on that side that's what i'm dealing with the carpet is particularly wet on that side and with it out like this it'll dry much better this is our prize and you can probably see that this was designed i didn't cut this at all this was designed to come apart like this. The only cut that I made was back here for the parking brake, and that's all I needed to do. But this is the carpet assembly out, and this is the side I'm worried about. This side is all soggy, but you can see that it's full of all this sound deadening foam. Also, it's just one piece. So sound deadening, carpet, everything, all one piece. I think I'm gonna hit this with a shop vac, sitting on top of probably one of the cars to dry, like my $200 Acura Vigor. Let it uh, air out a little bit, dry up. But that's how you get a carpet out of a Mini and the seats and the console. It's a lot of stuff. Well, this concludes the removal of the carpet, center console and trim, uh, front seats on the 2007 Mini Cooper S. Uh, as far as how much time it took me, it took me about an hour and a half with filming. Uh, that means if I were doing it without having to film, it might've taken me like a half hour, maybe 45 minutes. So that's not the difficult part. The thing to watch out for on this vehicle is things seem to be plastic and very breakable and they want to break. So be mindful of that as you work and try to take some extra care so that you don't break those components. I will put links in the description to additional information and other videos in the mini series, which is a series of videos I'm doing with this car. I'll also put a link in the description to ericthecarguide.com, which is where I ask you go if you have automotive questions not covered in this video. Aside from that, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Please subscribe and like this video if you liked it. Other than that, I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.